Welcome back to the channel and a continuation of looking at the insulation testing function of the MTR105 rotating machine tester from Mega. I've just started off a polarization index test running the MTR105 against the Keysight U1461A so you get to see how both of the instruments perform. I'm going to leave this test running whilst to take a closer look at the PI test function on the meters themselves. So some of you will notice that the Gossam Metrowatt MetroHit coil is missing from this test and I'm not displaying it. So that's for a number of reasons. The first reason is that the maximum range on an insulation test for the MetroHit is 3.1 gig ohms and the polarization index simulator I've got will actually go above that up to around about 14 gig ohms by the end so it's outside the range of the MetroHit coil uh, and I'll just show that now so I've got a 3 giga ohm resistor across the leads there and we'll go an insulation test at 500 volts and there we go So that's reading 2.8 gig ohms there. So what I'll do now is I'll stick, I'm sure this will be enough resistance, I'll put a 200 mega ohm resistor in series. So now I've got 3.2 gig ohms, which should be out of range. Yeah, so you see it there. Worked out quite nicely, that did, didn't it? 3099, 3.1, and it goes uh, out of range. So that's the first reason why I'm not using that. The second reason is I've not found a way to lock the instrument on to do a time test. There is no DAR or PI functionality built into this instrument, and you can't even lock the instrument on and run a manual clock. It literally simply is. You just press the button and there you'll see I should be on the uh, yeah there's the 200 mega ohm resistor there and as long as I keep my finger on the button you'll get a reading as soon as I let go it actually trips back to the voltage function test whether there's any voltage stored in your test circuit but you lose the reading completely quite frankly it is one of the worst implementations of an insulation tester I have come across it really, really is that bad. I just do not understand the approach from Gossam Metrowatt with this instrument, especially since they're aiming this as a motor testing multimeter. So that's why it's not appearing in the test. It's gonna come last place uh, in this video on polarization index testing. And in actual fact, it's such a poor implementation of an insulation tester, I'm gonna give it zero points. And I'm not even sorry this time. Words fail me, they really do. I'll put the screen back to the U1461A and the MTR105 and see how they're getting along with the polarization index tests. So just over three and a half minutes into the test, the reading is similar on both the instruments, but the mega is down to one decimal place and the key site is down to two. You can see that the mega is displaying the reading from the one minute mark, whereas the key site doesn't have that facility. So let's take a closer look at the key site instrument. So the U1461A is quite a bit more accomplished insulation tester than the MetroHit coil. Um, it does have both DAR and PI functionality, which you can see for, for this button here. Now it doesn't have built-in memory per se, but it will remember the last DAR and PI test that you did. There's the two last readings that it took to get data off of the instrument. That's done in a live logging mode, so you have to be connected permanently to a computer or uh, an iPad or iPhone. And you have two devices, uh, which is either the Bluetooth unit here or a USB infrared connector. And they both connect into this port at the back here. And then you can connect up to the software and you can see the actual reading that I took on the Pi simulator whirring away there as we speak. So you do get a little bit more information whilst you're connected to the computer. You only have the insulation reading and the voltage displayed on the instrument, but when you are connected to a computer 
you get the current as well. Um, however, you only get DAR or PI. When you're doing a PI test, it won't store the DAR data, uh, which is a bit of a disappointment. The other thing that's a bit of a problem with this instrument as well is that whilst I get the curve from the software, I just get it as a picture. I don't get any of the data. So the way I generally work is I do an initial test and then I'll go back three, six months, 12 months later, whatever it is, and I take another reading. I like to put that on the same plot to compare that to the baseline. With this setup, I can't do that. The only way I can do that is to manually record the readings and then create it in Excel or something like that. Now, there is a secondary issue with this Keysight unit when you're testing large machinery. For some reason, during an insulation test, it becomes unstable and can actually produce a bad reading even though the apparatus you're testing is perfectly fine. And I've put another video up uh, just displaying that, showing this instrument operating in parallel with a mega unit. The mega unit operates fine, but this becomes erratic. However, when you're testing smaller machinery, smaller three-phase motors, it is an actual fact fine. Okay, so that's the crux of the Keysight unit. We'll return back to test and see how the instruments are getting on. Okay, around six and a half minutes of the test gone now. And you can see the Mega has just gone up in a 0.5 giga ohm block there, whereas the Keysight continues to go up at that second decimal place, so a bit better resolution. Okay, so we'll take a closer look at the functionality of the MTR105. Okay, so for the MTR105, it's, its operation for a dial or a pie test is pretty much similar to the key site. It's selectable off the menu here, there's your dial, standard timing one there, and then there's the polarization index test. Now where this instrument does differ from key site is in the operation of the memory function. This does have its own built-in memory. The memory on the device is downloaded to a USB stick and then you transfer the USB stick to your computer. The other slight difference with this instrument to pretty much any other installation tester I've used is that you have to set up the memory tag before you can use the memory. So you spin him around to the memory function on the screen and you can see I've got some tags already set up here. So we can go into this one that we looked at and then measurements that have been made and you can see these are all the measurements on the screen that you can then page through and pull them back in for viewing as you see necessary so there's the installation test gives it its timestamp and then another press and it gives you the readings that are there so there's the ratio that it recorded back on the main menu you have this button here on the left hand side that is at the moment is an add new memory tag function. As soon as I plug the USB stick in that will then change now to a copy function so I hit that and it says export either the asset I'm on or all the assets. If I hit that it already knows it's there so we'll just overwrite it and you get export successful. And that's it done and then you can take the USB stick and download it onto your computer. Now the files when they're copied to USB are copied in a tab delimited format so they can be easily loaded into a spreadsheet package and it looks like it's using a common template irrespective of the function. When you pull the data in for a polarization index test you get a lot of blank fields in there and you can obviously delete those to make it a little bit tidier as I've done here. A couple of issues that I have with the data download that I think are quite poor from Mega. The first one is there is no DAR reading whilst you're doing a polarization index test. So if you want that computerized format, you'd have to do two tests, the DAR and then the PI, which is exactly the same as the Keysight operates. You also find that it has not loaded down any of the curve data. You just get the one minute and 10 minute, which again, for me, is a very disappointing from such a high-end instrument. I would have expected this to download some insulation resistance time data so I could plot a complete curve for putting into a report. That's the way I kind of like to work. Okay, so hopefully I've babbled along for long enough and we can return to the test and it should be nearing completion. So last few seconds of the test, both instruments are in about 14 gig ohm. 
you do see that there isn't enough resolution on the MTR105 to display the current completely, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, there's the final value for the Mega and there for the key site. So comparable in the PI values. You do see on the Mega everything's summaried on a one single screen, whereas on the key site you have to page through the results. So it just depends on what your preference is for that. All right, we'll get them into a spreadsheet and we'll see what it looks like. So here's the results from both the instruments. You see the two plots at the top and the actual readings in the table compared to the theoretical values. If you look at the curves, you can kind of see the key site is probably performing a little bit better than the MTR105, especially at the 250 volt test voltage. And if you're looking at the actual PI and DAR values, and the MTR105 seems to be the slightly better performer. But uh, it's also interesting to note that on the Mega, although the display is only going to one decimal place, if you try and calculate the PI value based on the readings, it doesn't work out. So it looks like the instrument is actually using a higher resolution to do the calculation of the ratios rather than the value displayed on the screen. So this is another simulator that I tested both the meters on, which has a much higher insulation resistance value. And you can actually see that the MTR105 is now starting to struggle with the actual accuracy of the insulation value reading. The, the polarization index test values at the end uh, are not too bad. Uh, both instruments are very similar and they've both drifted from the actual theoretical value. Um, but you can see the MTR105 is not quite as accurate as the Keysight unit. Alright, points time for polarisation index test functionality. Uh, as I said earlier on, the metric coil is out of this, it's in last place. And for me, I think the U1461A from Keysight outperforms the MTR105 from Mega. It is that bit more accurate over the insulation testing values especially when you get up into the higher gigaohm values. You have much better software with the key site that is free to download. I know it does have an issue with testing large induction machines uh, and there's a separate video that I've put up with regard to that. But if I'm looking just purely testing standard low voltage motors, it does seem to outperform the MTR105 in my opinion. So. That's it, five points to the key site, three to the mega, and another duck to the metro hit. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again in the next video on the MTR105.